In this video, we use PyTorch to calculate partial derivatives with automatic differentiation. Determining partial derivatives by hand using rules, like we have been so far in this subject, is helpful for understanding how calculus works. In practice, however, automatic differentiation, which we learned about at the end of subject three in this Machine Learning Foundation series, enables us to calculate partial derivatives much more easily especially if there are a large number of variables involved, as is common in many machine learning models. As an example, let's use the PyTorch automatic differentiation library to calculate the slope of z with respect to both x and y at any given point x, y, z. So as we learned with all of the other examples so far using automatic differentiation in PyTorch, when we create our input tensors, which in this case are the scalar x and the scalar y, we need to use the requires grad method to make sure that we're tracking gradients on those tensors, which will then allow gradient tracking to be contagious on any other tensors that are touched throughout the equations. So let's uh, start off by creating the scalar tensor x, which I'm going to use the x point zero to start with. And same thing for y. So we'll set y equal to zero. And we can then calculate z by passing x and y through our function, which is still x squared minus y squared from much earlier on in this notebook. And that gives us our value z, which at that point is indeed equal to zero. So because the gradient tracking that we turned on for x and y is contagious. The gradient tracking flows through in this forward pass through the function to create the value for our scalar tensor z, our output tensor. And so we do have gradient tracking on, as we can see here. And then this allows us to perform automatic differentiation by calling the backward method on this tensor z. So this allows automatic differentiation to flow backward through however many functions we have. In this case, there's just one. And we now have the gradients of z with respect to x and with respect to y. Now, as it happens, and as we could have figured out from our exercises above already, the slope of the point 0, 0, 0 is 0 with respect to both the x and y axes. So to see some figures that demonstrate this, here's one example here. Well, actually at this point <laughs> isn't zero, zero, zero. This has a x of two, a y of zero, and a z of four. But that is another point where there is a slope of zero. But the point zero, 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 we do have that in here. There it is, so here, x is equal to zero, y is equal to zero. Remember we set y equal to zero. We can't see it because it's just a slice here, but it is equal to zero. We can see x is equal to zero, z of course is equal to zero, and at this point there is no slope of z with respect to x or y. You could jump over to the GeoGebra click and point tool that we used in a preceding video and see this for yourself in a nice interactive example as well if you'd like to. Cool, so now if you would like to become more familiar with doing automatic differentiation yourself to calculate partial derivatives, then I'd recommend you repeat the most recent paper and pencil exercises using PyTorch, or if you're feeling adventurous, you could use TensorFlow, or you could do one and then the other. So we learned how to do automatic differentiation with TensorFlow uh, earlier on in these machine learning foundations in subject three, the introduction to calculus. And yeah, so repeat these three exercises here, and you already know what the answer should come out to for all of the components of each of the three exercises, because we already worked through those solutions together. So now you can recapitulate those answers using the automatic differentiation library of your choice. And it will be easiest to use PyTorch because I've really made it easy for you to do it here. You just need to substitute in new values for x and y, and it should be pretty straightforward. So I'm not going to work through the solutions with you. 
I think you should be able to figure out this on your own with everything that we've covered so far. Neat. Hope you had fun with those PyTorch exercises. Up next, we'll dig a little deeper into partial derivative theory by working through some examples with multivariate functions that are more complex than z equals x squared minus y squared.